What? How did you meet your wife? We met on Tinder. You met on Tinder. Tinder. POF back in the day. What? Do you remember the first thing you said to her on uh, POF? Mm, no, I don't. Mm. You DTF. <laughs> <laughs> We are here in Washington, D.C., the nation's capital. I am campaigning to be the first lizard president of the United States. And in order to do so, I think I need to go down to the field and have conversations with real people. Connect with the folks of America so that they can see that a lizard is not that different from them and perhaps is even qualified to hold political office. Let's talk to some people. Hello. Hi, how's it going? What's your name? My name's Tessa. Tessa, very nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. What brings you to uh, this great land of Washington, D.C.? Um, I literally have no idea. You have no idea? Yeah. You friend. have to have some sort of an um, idea. Her, I guess. Okay, your friend over there. Uh, girlfriend, yeah. Your girlfriend, okay. How, how did you and your girlfriend meet? Uh, summer camp. Summer camp, okay. <laughs> we worked at summer cute. camp. Do you remember the first thing you said to her? Oh, shit. I think I told her to get off a of bed. She was standing on it. Really? Yeah. Okay, so you guys were bunking together. No. Oh, okay. Okay. So so she brought you here to D.C.? Yeah. Well, okay. not really. It was my car. She doesn't okay. live here. Whose idea was it to come here? Uh, hers. Hers. And uh, where are you originally from? Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Is I'm this your first time here in D.C.? Yeah. It's weird. Why, why is it weird? It's so big. Really? Yeah. How do you feel uh, uh, being in a bigger place? Small. Small. Okay. <laughs> do you, in, just in general, do you prefer living in a smaller place than in a big city? Yeah. Why Don't is you, that? like, under a rock? I, I, uh, I do. I do like living in bigger cities. I feel like there's a lot more to do, but there's something to be said about, you know, like, the sort of quiet nature of just mm -hmm. kind of sitting around and uh, in peace. Does that, do you prefer peace to chaos? I do. Okay. Have you had any times in your life that um, you felt like you've experienced a lot of chaos? Right now. Right now. Actively. Actively. Is, yes. is, is being here in D.C. the most chaos you've experienced? I think you're the most chaos I've ever experienced. I'm the, I'm the most chaos you've ever experienced? <laughs> yes. I feel like that's a good thing. I feel like you've had a, a nice, chill life then. Yeah. What do you do back in Oklahoma? Um, I sit and I look at hay bales. You sit and you look at hay bales? Yeah. You want to try sometime? What, uh, what kind of hay, like bills of hay? Yeah, they're rolls. Okay. Do you work on a farm? No. Why do you look at the bills of hay? It's pretty much the only thing we got to do there. Really? What do you do? Like for, uh, are you in school or you have a no. career of some kind? This is it. This is all I do. This is all you do? Wander. Are you, are you being serious with me? No. Okay. Tell me what you do. Uh, I dropped out of school. You dropped out of school? I'm going to go to welding school. Oh, cool. Oh, to go to welding school? Yeah. That's badass. Yeah, it is badass. Well, can, I, can I ask you what made you uh, make the decision to uh, drop out and go to welding school? I don't know. You don't know? I think welding is a lot of money, and it's mm -hmm. something I want to do. Technical mm -hmm. trade. Mm -hmm. How long have you been welding for? None. Not long? I have no experience. Okay. But so you, you have no experience doing it, but something about it, uh, the fire, the brimstone, exactly. just kind of appealed Make to you. Make me feel like a man. Mm -hmm. What, uh, is there a certain thing that you desire to, to one day craft? A house. A house? What about a house? Can you weld a house? No, but you use things in technical trades mm. to make a house. Okay, okay. I want to do like HVAC too. How do you, now how about swords? Because when I think of how welding, the first thing yeah. I think of swords. I sleep next to a sword, okay, like you, the one next to my bed. You buried the lead about your life here. Oh, my bad. You sleep <laughs> each night. Next to a sword, yeah. Next to a sword. Actually two. It's two, two swords. swords. And tell me, on, tell me honestly, yeah. does, I don't know... You said that uh, Oklahoma is very small, that it's very, um, you know, peaceful, uh -huh. but I don't know what the crime rate is like, <laughs> but um, do you feel a sense of comfort sleeping next to the swords? Yes. Okay. If in, in the event, right. oh, God forbid, mm -hmm. somebody were to break into your home, an mm -hmm. intruder, are you willing and ready to slice them? To slice them? Absolutely. Really? Yeah. Be right. Yeah. Tell, tell, right their heart. Be honest with no me. No hesitation. Be, be honest with me. No jokes here. Uh -huh. Do you think you could kill a person? Yeah. You think so? If you had to. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah. Hmm. What would uh, uh, if a person was? Pro but I feel like a, a a sword. It's a very violent death. Well, I mean, if they're breaking in, they deserve that, don't they? Okay. 
I respect that. Yeah. What's your name again? My name is Tessa. Tessa, uh, what, what is your greatest dream for the future? My greatest dream is to be a mom. To be a mom? Yeah. yeah I, you said you're going to be a badass mom. A badass wielding mom. a baby in one hand, and two sword swords in the, the other, other hand, Absolutely. Juggling them all. Yeah. Well, I'm excited for you, man. Thank you. Is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? <laughs> Beautiful. Tessa, thank you very much for talking to a gecko. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. You. Me. You. Hello. Howdy. So, okay, your girlfriend, Tessa, said that you're the reason why you guys are here. Yes. And explain that for me. Um, I went to Girl Scout camp and then dragged her to Vermont with me mm-hmm. to work in a different place. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, I got time left for my visa. Let's go on a road trip. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like politics. So I was like, Washington. Can I ask what life is like at Girl Scout camp? Um, how to they're describe. all they're snickering over there because there's some sort of it's, thing. It's a bonding experience. Okay. okay. You make friends for life. Okay. It's great fun. Mm-hmm. You don't sleep. Mm. What are you What are you doing while you're not sleeping? Are people Are there like rituals? Are people like summoning things? Campers puke. Okay. And they pee, and they get homesick. Mm-hmm. So oh, you're, you're a just, counselor. I'm a counselor. Oh, okay. I was, yeah, yeah, I was wondering that because you you seem <laughs> a little, a little, little old too to, be, old to be, a counselor. yeah. Okay, so you're a counselor. Yes. What um, has a kid ever like? Because when you're a counselor, I feel like that's a, a, a you know like a big role. Like these kids, they're gonna remember you when they're your age. Yeah. Have have a has a kid ever come to you with like a dilemma of some sorts that you're like, huh? I don't I don't know what to do here. Man. Most of the time, it's just that they peed the bed. And then I have to get out of bed at 3 a.m. and find them new sheets. For me, that would be a dilemma where it's I would a, go, I don't know dilemma. what to do here. Interesting. Yeah. Just, um, how old are the kids? Uh, 7 to 17. 7 to 17. And how old are the kids that you have in, like, in your bunk? Oh, we had different kids every week. They were okay. cool. So, uh, can I, does, does being with these kids, does it kind of like remind you of what your life was like when you were their age? No. Really? These are American kids. Really? That at Ghost Scout Camp. I never did Ghost Scout Camp. I'm British. So what, what? Okay. So what would you say is like one of the big differences that you've noticed between uh, the American adolescent experience that you're observing as a counselor and your British adolescent experience? Um, y'all just know the national anthem, <laughs> and you like sing it as the flag's going up every day. That's the thing that we had to do. Yeah. What's the British national anthem? It was "God Save the Queen," but. They changed it to God Save the King. I have no idea. She's How do you feel about the Queen? Yikes. I wish I was in the country. Really? Yeah. It's Are like people a- like, is, there, is it like a moment of unity or? Oh, I think it's going to like split people because some people like the Queen, some people don't. And oh, you're going to ask me which one I am? Do you like the Queen? I have mixed feelings about the monarchy. Mixed feelings about the monarchy. Okay. What? Tell me about this mix. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> is this is this well okay f- f- first of all is this like a controversial thing because i would like i'll be honest i didn't know that there was a queen of england before she died i don't i didn't know no i didn't he's I a serious, gecko he's a gecko well no i mean like i i saw on twitter everyone's like oh the queen died and i'm like i i didn't know that we pay attention to things going on in fucking england I mean, she's the queen we know about the president Okay, but th- for a while the president was like a dick that you just couldn't well, avoid. We, we knew about the president before the dick. Okay, so t- all right, so th- in the mix, tell me why you might like the monarchy. Um, they bring in great tax money, okay. and I'm sure that as individuals, like as a family, yeah. they're great people. Mm-hmm. But the role that they play, I'm not a fan of. I don't like having a monarchy. What I- what is the role that they play? You you never heard of them, right? They don't do all that much. I, which that's I why I a really bad saying. Some of them do great things, like Meghan Markle, great mm. things for charity. Mm-hmm. Um, same with Harry. They speak up for young people a lot. Yeah, yeah. Great fan, like massive fan of that. Okay. Not a fan of other things. So who's the current guy right now? Is it Charles? It's King Charles. I should know that, okay. right? Okay, all right. Who, who's the princess? Meghan Markle, right? Uh, she's a duchess, I think. Oh, she gave away a title, so I don't know. Okay. What, whose life do you think is easier yours or Meghan markle's oh mine a million percent really pick a different member of the royal family her life's hard okay is there one is there one that you think like just doesn't fucking do anything and your life is harder oh probably like all of the other like 
duchesses and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I none of them have to clean up kids' piss. <laughs> this is going to go out somewhere and people are going to be like, she hates her country. <laughs> She's a bad Brit. No, I I mean, look, we're in D.C. I feel like patriotism, it's about questioning yeah. the, your country. Yeah. If you really love your country, you, you fucking voice when you don't like something uh-huh. they're doing, right? Uh-huh. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. You're in the, I didn't know any of this shit existed beforehand, so I'm asking you. Valid. Um... Yeah, no, Meghan Markle, her life's made a lot more difficult by mm. the royal family. She's not white, and that's a bad thing in England, apparently. Mm-hmm, Shouldn't mm-hmm, be. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, her life's been made more difficult. Mm. Um, How long have you and your girlfriend been together? Two, what, what's the date? So, two months. Oh, wow. Oh, so it's fresh. And nine days? Two months, nine days. I, I, I asked her this, and maybe you can answer. Do you remember the first thing... That the f- kind of first interaction you guys yeah, had? Yeah, um, I was stood on top of a bunk bed and she looked at me and she went, get down. Um, <laughs> and then walked into her bedroom and I was like, ooh. But she's also a counselor, right? Yeah, but she's like, um, so she's ad gram staff. So she's she ran out lake. Mm. I was just a counselor. Mm-hmm. She was like bigwig. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You were her boss. <laughs> Is that scandalous? A little bit. It caused a lot of problems. Really? Oh, can yeah, I, people- before we go, can I hear like, What's what the the tea on this? Well, do they say that in England? I feel yeah, like we do so tea. People found out about us. Okay. People weren't happy about us, mm-hmm. and then people were mad that we were still allowed to work together. Really? But I'm a lifeguard, and she runs our lake. Really? So it would be hard for us to not work together. But okay. people didn't like that. So do you like those people who didn't like that you guys were together? Mm-hmm. Are you like why the fuck do you guys care what we're doing, or are you like? I kind of see where you're coming from, but I like this girl. I'm going to do it anyway. Eh, I just, I, I was just distracted by her. I didn't give a shit about the other people. That's very sweet. Yeah. What's your name again? I'm Harry. Harry. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else you want to say to the people of the computer before we go? Hi, mom. <laughs> Thank you very much for talking to a real gecko. Welcome to DC. Uh, I hope to visit. Uh, where are you from again? <laughs> England. Okay, I hope to visit there, and maybe they'll make me the gecko, the lizard king. Maybe one day. I would love that. Thank you, Harry. Thank Bye. you, Tess. How you doing, man? I'm quite happy. Really happy to be here. Really? Uh, Washington you... is a nice place. Now, t- why exactly are you happy to be here? What are you enjoying about being yeah, here Yeah, we are here to, to work. Uh, we have with my partner a company, a robotics company, mm-hmm. and we're doing uh, events, and we were invited to the Swiss Embassy. And I'm really happy because this morning everything works. Mm, I was mm. stress about it. Mm. You work at a robotics company? Yes. Okay, tell me your opinion on this. In the future, do you believe that machines will become smarter than men and take over the human race? Huh. It's a huge topic. Yeah. And I really think that we will develop AI that will be in the future more intelligent than humans for mm. different topics. I think if you look after, you know, who do you say that? Like chess? Chess? Chess, yeah, chess. yeah. Oh, you yeah, how there's like robots that can beat yes. people in chess. And for sure the robot will always be better than a human yeah. because yeah. it can calculate strategy most faster than you. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. if you look after humankind, you know, like if I want to know you or mm-hmm. you want to know me and yeah. we have like a... You know, develop relation with people. Robots sure. cannot do that. Sure. And it's what I'm saying to the students when I met them. Said, you need to cultivate curiosity. Mm-hmm. That's something that robots cannot do. Mm-hmm. You need to cultivate uh, social interaction mm-hmm. because we we will be more better than robots. Now, have you heard sure. of those? Uh, there are these robots out there. These like developed. AI chat bots. Yeah, I've I've had a person tell me that they once fell in love with one of these chatbots. They're getting like that sophisticated. Have you ever like seen one of these things? I didn't see this kind of robot, but I I already uh, read some uh, article on that, mm-hmm. and it's true for for sure. But at the beginnings, they are just program, mm. and we always need to remember that they are just program. Mm. Mm. You know, and but we feed this uh, brain because it's a brain and yeah. yeah. And all the time you use like uh, a c- captcha on the, the net, you know, you have yeah, to say it's a capture. car, it's a, you feed the robots mm. with mm. information. So uh, kind of on the subject of interpersonal relationships, how is, uh, how is your love life going, man? Uh, at the moment, I'm, I'm alone, mm-hmm. but uh, I had uh, a really, a really good love for a girl. Mm. And 
was not the time, you know. Mm. Uh, mm. My life now, my love life, it's for my company, mm -hmm. for my associate, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm fight for that. Mm -hmm. at the moment. I, I, are you feeling like it's interesting because when you get really into your career and whatnot you can kind of be okay with not you know pursuing any kind of like romantic thing is that where you say you're at right yeah, now it's exactly that yeah. mm -hmm. and it's a really difficult topics you know because when you need to choose between the love like the girl or the love mm -hmm. that is your company your dream mm -hmm. As I said before to your friend, uh, I'm a gardener at the beginnings, and now I have a robotics company. You were a gardener at yeah. the beginning? That's so interesting <laughs> to go from gardening to robotics because they feel like opposite things. One is like earth, dirt, nature, and one is like machine, metal, oil. Yeah, it's totally different, but I think it's for, for us, and uh, my associate is a logistician at mm -hmm. the beginnings, mm -hmm. and... Uh, it's uh, a reason to, to show that if you want to do something, yeah. you can. Mm -hmm. And we are living in a, a world that if you want to learn, you can learn. Mm -hmm. We have internet now. We, if you, if you say that you cannot learn, it's not true. It's yeah. a choice. Yeah. You know? And, yeah. and it's the reason why I'm falling in love with my company because behind there is a story of four friends, no, no engineers and people who want to reach uh, an objective that they they are, they say together they want to do it. So this is uh, your company it's that you company. Uh, run with, uh, with this Garrett, guy the, and, and a few other people. Yes. Tell me what your relationship is like with the people that you run the company with. Are you guys very close friends? We are very close friends. We don't really have a you know a border between privacy and. The, the job and the company. Interesting. I was actually I was going to ask you that because one thing I think about all the time is that um, the mix between friendship and business, as you say, you don't have like a boundary yeah. between privacy. That's a really tricky one. How do you guys kind of navigate that? I think it's you're right. It's tricky, but I navigate because with that to to know my my associate or my employees. Because mm -hmm. I think if you have a problem with your girl mm -hmm. and you don't tell us that you are not good, mm. you will have a problem mm -hmm. in your job. Mm -hmm. And if you are, my employees can say, I'm not good at the moment. Mm. I will say, okay, take your time, go home, take, take care of your, your, your girl or your friend. You yeah. know? And I ask my, my friend to my associate to come in the morning for the coffee every day. And for 15 minutes, we just have a discussion. Mm -hmm. about oh was the football match yesterday mm -hmm. no not talking about job all the time right 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 you get the how was your weekend yeah. how's your girlfriend doing all that you get it all out and then we get into x equals mx y equals mx plus b that's the yeah. thing yeah. Uh, say it again well i was just making a stupid joke yeah. but um interesting so would you say that you are like very good at um like if you have a problem with someone like you just because some people, some people have like have an issue where if they have a problem with someone, they'll like kind of be passive aggressive about it versus like just saying, "Hey, this thing is wrong." Uh, on being very direct about it, are you good with being direct with people about issues? That you I'm have? good to being direct. Sometimes too direct, I think. Really, uh, but I really try to to some to change that a bit to be more you know open to the discussion and mm -hmm. starting with the point that maybe I'm wrong. Mm, mm. And that's a tough thing to do. It's a tough thing to do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Were you always good at that, or is this something you kind of had to develop? It's something that I will need always to develop. Mm. I think I will never be good on that because I will always meet different people, people that will react differently, mm -hmm. and you're not all the time sure of, you know, oh, what does he think about what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. if you don't know the guy could be difficult sometimes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. man this has been a uh, uh, great talking yeah, to you man me too. thank you of course man is there is there anything else you want to say to the people of the computer before we go no it was a uh, nice to talk to to you the real gecko and uh Great What's the name of this company? Workshop 4.0 I didn't even ask what kind of robots do you guys we make? have robotics arm like you no know, that's like farm. an arm yeah that can move and take things we also had uh, your robot from uh, Boston Dynamics, the the dogs. Oh, sh we, I've seen that. Yeah, we were the first to use it in Switzerland. It was oh, a great really? opportunity for us. And uh, yeah, we have small robots, 15 kilos, but the biggest one is one ton and a half. 
Well, listen, I, w- far into the future, when you're uh, a cyborg guy and you're commanding uh, a, an army of robotic soldiers, I do hope that you spare me. Yeah, I do hope that if we have uh, an army like that, it will be for love and change the world for the good. That's very sweet. Yeah. What's your name again? Nicola. Nicola, thank you very much for talking to me, Gecko, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, me too. Bye-bye. We did it. What's your name? Zach. What's your life like? What are you all about? Uh, in the army, last five years. Uh, I got another five years to go. Are you aware that your I'm just gonna say your voice does not match? Yeah, how yeah, you look. yeah. I get that a lot. You get that, I get a, that lot. a lot. Yeah. A lot really? of people think I'm like 30 years old or something like that. How old are you? 23. You're 23. Yeah. You're like the voice of a. You're uh, every different part of you is a new yeah, age. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, can you guess what I did in the army? Helicopters. Nah, nah. Give me one more. Uh, fucking rocket launchers. No, nah, no. Nah. I was on tanks. Tanks. Yeah, I was too tall for them. So, like, right, there's a high limit for tanks. And- what? Okay. What sort of life analogies have you learned from operating tanks? You know, like a tank. Is, uh, how? In what way is a tank like life? Is it? How is a tank like a relationship? How is a tank like running a business? So, uh. There's four people in a tank yeah. for the United States, and uh, it's all about teamwork, basically. Mm, mm, so you learn mm. a lot about teamwork, because if mm-hmm. your driver ain't doing something, you can't move. Mm. Your gunner ain't not doing something, you can't hit anything. Mm, Loader mm. can't, not doing his job. All right, so uh, what position were you in the tank, or were you doing all of that? Um, I was, uh, so I started off as a driver, yeah. a loader, then I moved up to a gunner, and then uh, I finished off as tank commander. Mm. Tank, as a tank commander. Yeah. And uh, what did you learn about, like, commanding people? How do you get people to respond to you if they're like on their phone playing Tetris when they should be? I doing should the gun? respect, and they'll respect you. Because mm. um, if you're like a a shitty leader, excuse my language and all, but uh, no one's gonna respect you, mm. and mm. they're not gonna do what you say. Mm. But if you show that you want to work with them and you respect them and what they do, and you mm. listen to them. Mm-hmm. I'll follow you anywhere. Have you ever been, uh, I mean, being in the Army, you, you before you became a leader, you were under the command of a lot of different leaders. Yeah. Yeah. What, from your experience, would you say uh, is the difference between a good leader and a bad leader? So I had both. I had um, bad leaders and I had good leaders. Okay, what were the bad leaders like? Um, you, know, you don't have to give any names. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is one dude. I... Um, I beat him in a game of checkers. It was my sergeant. Okay. And he was like, you beat me in a game of checkers? I was like, hell yeah, I did. And he smoked me right there. So push-ups and stuff. Yeah. And then he was like, you sure? I was like, hell yeah. Because if I would have lied, I had to do it either way. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I just didn't like his style of leadership. Mm. And then I had other leaders um, that call, check up on me on the weekends and stuff. Like, hey, how you doing? Mm. If you need anything, this is my number. Hey, I'm going to be like 100 miles away, but if you need anything, just call me. Mm. And mm. I took that and I was like, damn, that's a really good way to like lead mm. and i made that in my leadership style mm. so you it sounds like you lead with a, a lot of kindness yeah yeah what's your line between like there's there's a problem i feel like leaders run into where you want to be kind you want to be benevolent but you also have to fucking lay down the law yeah when it comes time is that yeah. something you you yeah. are good at doing absolutely um so there's a there's a line between work and play like yeah when to joke around and when not to sure and um i try to like Share that with the uh, guys that, that's like under me, mm-hmm. and um, I really haven't had any problems. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. if there is, we try we like to try to solve it on the lowest level, because mm-hmm. um, the further up it gets, the more people that know. It's just a pain in the ass. How would this six year old version of you react if he saw you commanding a tank? Dude, he'd probably stoked. <laughs> he'd be like, "Holy shit, dude!" Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Where do you like like uh, have you driven this tank on like an active battlefield before? Um, no. So what the would like um I was in California with the training. There's a giant training area out there. Yeah. And we train uh, different armies. Mm. Um I worked with the Japanese, the British, the Canadians, the French, the Germans, South Koreans, countries from all over. Mm, mm. And um but we do uh we do war games. War and, games. Yeah, yeah. So basically it's like it's a giant game of laser tag. <laughs> so the, so instead of giant uh, uh, fucking rockets, yeah. the tank shoots lasers. Yeah, and it's like, and then we have like systems to say, oh, you're dead. And, stuff like that. and we also shoot blanks and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And uh, like simulated rockets. Mm, stuff. Mm. But yeah, it's, it's really cool. Get your heart racing for sure. That's so interesting, man. So are you in a position where like, if, some, if I have no idea how the military works. Yeah, yeah. If shit goes down in some 
place that we and we're at war like are you you got to go over there and yeah. bring the how do you where where is this tank right now uh well mine yeah i, I jumped tanks uh my last tank was in fort uh irwin california it's in california yeah so uh, here's what is confusing me is let's say there's a war in uh Pan let's say we go to war with france okay yeah how are you gonna get the tank over there tanks are already over there you have tanks everywhere? Yeah, so or the US military. Uh we have tanks everywhere. Um there's bases everywhere. So I have like I have the opportunity to be stationed anywhere in the world basically. Really? Um, so there's a tank, you know, you got tanks in Alaska? Uh we don't have tanks over there anymore. There's no armor. What are you gonna do um, if there's an Alaskan war? They put me on a gun truck. A, a gun truck sounds like another name for a tank. No, nah, no, nah, it's not. There's only one type of tank, that's the Abrams. Okay. Is a gun truck kinda like you're sitting in the back of a pickup truck and you have a gun? Yeah. That's just, just a truck. Yeah. But they call it a gun truck because there's a gun mounted. There's a gun man in there. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. What made you want to get into all this stuff in the first place? Uh, I joined out of high school to travel. Mm. See the world. And it worked out for you? Yeah, because I'm from a small farm town. Okay. Nothing happens. Population like 1,500. Interesting. So I'm going to be honest. You know, I feel like, and I don't know what, what, you're, what you see out there, but I feel like the... Um, Public perception of joining the military is split back and forth. Yeah. And I've, I've talked to people who they joined the military and they, they kind of regret it. Mm -hmm. And I've talked to people like you. It seems like it's done great things for you. What's yeah. your kind of like take on that? Like, should people join the military at a high school or is there like a certain kind of person that that would be good for? Uh, everyone has their different views. Yeah. Um, I've had soldiers who got out the army because, like, I was like, "Oh, I tried it. It's not for me, though." Mm -hmm. And they got out, and they went. They're living a better life. And mm -hmm. some guys are like, "Oh man, that's all I got." Mm -hmm. and they'll just go mm -hmm. with that. Uh, my experience has been good. Um, the army's paid for my entire bachelor's degree. Mm. I'm about to start my master's, and they're going to pay for that too. Um, I've got job experience. Uh, met people from around the world. Mm -hmm. um, I enjoy it. It does have its ups and downs. It's definitely a roller coaster, but uh, you just take the good with the bad. What do you what are you getting your what do you hope to do in the future? What are you getting your degree in? Uh well I have a degree in environmental uh science with mm -hmm. focus fish wildlife management. And I wanted to work with like the National Park Service or US Fish Wildlife Service helping threatened and endangered species. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um well man, what's your name again? Zach. Zach. Yeah. Zach, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Uh no. No. I'm good. Zach, thank you very much yeah, for talking to a real thanks. gecko, man. Uh, uh, thanks, su support. Thanks for thank you for your service. Thank you for your support. Of course, man. All Take right. care, brother. Right, you too. Very nice to meet you. Oh, very nice to meet you too. I'm gonna think of you next time I see a big tank. Thanks. That is Zach. I didn't know. I'm like scared now. I didn't know that they have fucking tanks everywhere. There, could, you could be just walking around, and look. You're, there's a fucking tank behind a bush that you don't know about. What's your name, man? Jason. Jason. Nice to meet you, man. What's uh, what's going on with you? What's bringing you around here to D.C.? Well, I got a five o'clock flight out of here. Oh yeah. Yeah. What uh, so, what what brought you here in the first place? I was uh, I don't even know where. It was up in. Was, I was at an IKEA. Really. I was at an IKEA. Okay. I was up on the roof doing some solar work. Mm. Mm. Is that what you do as a profession? Is solar work? Uh, do you believe that? The country is slowly but surely transitioning into solar power. Yeah, I think it's it's a necessity. Yeah. Um, but can I ask you? I uh, just pulled the microphone is, right up to your is, is storage. Yeah. Okay. Is, is getting into the storage game. Okay. Because you can grid tie everything. When that goes, what what's left over for you? Mm, mm. So you need some kind of storage mm. system. Mm. What what do you think about the sun in general? I think it's volatile. Yeah. That bitch is always exploding, got yeah. little, little fucking things yeah. blowing off. Yeah. It. Yeah. yeah. Solar storms. Yeah, yeah. If the sun were like a person, would you be friends with them or would they kind of have too chaotic of an energy for you? I'd be friends with the sun. You'd be friends with the sun? Yeah. Yeah. What's your what's your personal life like? Do you have a lot of friends and family? You got a girlfriend? Yeah, I'm married. We live in Atlanta. Oh, nice. And, uh, I mean, no, I don't have a whole bunch of friends. Okay. No. The the ones I do are close, and that's that's it. Do you, the really the friends that you do have? Do you you said you don't trust people? A lot. Yeah. Really? Can I ask why you don't trust yeah, people? Just, just a lot of people.
people are shady. Mm. I could be shady. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if I am, then I know. I, I wonder what else, else you got from that. I, I wonder what else you got in that place where you pulled that Mountain Dew from. That's right. There's a bunch in there. Have that's you had a, experiences? Have you had experiences uh, in the past that have, have caused you to be less trusting of people? I mean, just distrust, just loyalty, you know, in, in, in people, you know, mm -hmm. in the past. Yeah, friends mm -hmm. that have, have come and gone, mm -hmm. most definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And d does, are you like, I mean, how do you feel about that? Like, is it a, is it a sad thing or is it just kind of like, this is the way that people are and I accept it? Yeah, I just accept it. Okay. I just accept it. Okay. I mean, what? I mean, what am I going to go around trying to change everybody? And, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, I don't get the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You be you and do you, and I do me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. A simple philosophy. I mean, super simple. Did you did you used to trust people? You know, before you you kind of adopted this new philosophy. I mean, sometimes you have to. You got to trust people, you know, especially in management and work. Yeah. You trust, you know, trust goes a long way. Trust is, I trust that you have the ability to to operate this thing. Right. And, you know, so, I mean. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What does somebody have to do to earn your trust? I think it's pretty much what I do unto you, you you do unto me. Mm, okay. You know, treat I others show, how you want to be treated. I show first how I want right. to be treated and the right. respect level. Right. And if you can't match that, then so be it. Right, right, right. Just, what, do you tend to wait until you've gotten respect from other people to show respect to them, or do you proactively try to treat people with I, respect? Proactively. Nice. Yeah. And nice. especially now, I've been, in, I've been in Georgia for 10 years, so... Mm -hmm. You got a, there's that little Southern hospitality. Sure, yeah. You give, you know, you, you got to give a lot of people the benefit. Yeah, and yeah. They're decent people, decent yeah. human beings, and yeah. trustworthy. You hope they are. So this is interesting because I, I, like, part of you is saying, like, you know, Southern hospitality, give people the benefit of the doubt. But then another part of you is like, oh, trust yeah. people. Are you, are you, is that a thing you're trying to balance? Not really, no. Okay. Not consciously, I'm trying to balance that. Okay, okay. That's just how that. That's just how the brain's working. So you do solar stuff. What does your wife do? Can I ask? She's a, she's a veterinarian. She's a veterinarian. Are you? Do you like animals? Yeah. It's vet, veterinary stuff. It's hard because I feel like you get into it because you like animals, but once you're there, all you're doing is watching animals get cut in half all day. It's a tough thing. You guys got dogs and cats and stuff. Yeah. Okay, okay. How'd you meet your wife? Can I ask? Yeah, we got chickens. You guys got chickens? Are you on a farm? No. We just I have, we have two acres of land. Oh, really? We got chickens. Are they, they like... Lay eggs. Four of them lay eggs every single day. Are they, uh, uh, like, pets or mainly, like, no, tools for produce? No, I don't fuck with them. Yeah, you don't fuck with produce. them? Nah, I feed them. I mean, they're cool and all, but that's about where we leave it. Tell me the honest truth. Tell me the honest truth. If the chicken died, would you be that sad? I mean, we've lost a lot. We've lost probably twelve since I've started. So yeah, okay. I mean, it's it, definitely it's sad. But it's not that sad. Yeah, but it's not. Like, it's not like well, if the dog, like dog if the dog died, died you'd yeah, be very dog, sad. That's a different story. Okay, it's a different story than the chicken. Yeah. Do they have names at least, or they die so quickly you don't even fucking name no, them? No. You don't even name them. <laughs> what? How did you meet your wife? We met on we met on Tinder. We met on Tinder. Tinder, POF back in the day, ten years ago. Wow! We celebrated our our ten year. Oh, congratulations! What do you remember the first thing you said to her on uh, POF? Mm, nope, I don't. Mm. Mm. You DTF? <laughs> what is what? What was it about her profile? Do you remember that that kind of? No, just because at that point I was I was a slut. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Fucking, you were oh, right yeah, swiping on everything. Yeah, come on. Have you seen these people? They build these little machines that like they set their phone down and it just. I've seen it. Did you? Okay, so you were slutting around on POF. What was it, if anything, that made you decide? You know what? I've been slinging dick all around Georgia. It's time for me to settle down. What made you want to settle down? 
I mean, I, what's what's your definition of settled down? Well, you're married, right? You are married. Yeah. You got the kids. You're. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know if you deleted the Tinder account or not, Man. but we grow pot. We fucking snort coke. I mean, what's settled? Yeah. I'll never probably settle down. <laughs> yeah? I'll never settle never down. Never settle down? I like that. We like to party. We party. You party? We party. And we're we're at we're fifty years old. Really? Still party. What what's the party scene like down in Georgia? <laughs> Depends on what you're what you're getting into. Okay. I wanna get yeah. I, when I go I wanna get into whatever you're getting into. You seem like the guy. No, I we we're we're activists in Georgia for cannabis reform. Oh, cool! Yeah, cool. So we were with we we came up here and marched with Normal, uh, the National Organization of Reform Marijuana Laws. Yeah. And anyhow, that's what we're into. We enjoy pot. Right, we enjoy everything about it: growing, mm-hmm. smoking. Are you high right now? Um, you don't have to tell me. No. Okay. What's your name again? Jason. Jason, uh, thank you very much for talking to me, man. Is there anything else you want to say to the people man, at the computer before we go? Talk to me. That was awesome. Thank you for letting me talk. Of course, man. Thanks for, for sure. chatting with me. Yes, sir. Hey, take care, Jason. Enjoy that Mountain Dew. What's your name, man? My name? Yeah. Daquan. Daquan. Daquan, what's, uh, what's, what's, going, what, what's bringing you here to D.C.? I live here. You live here? Yeah. Uh, I feel like uh, this is int- this is like a tourist attraction, right? But like you live here. Yeah. Do you find that the closer you live to a major place, the less you go there? I guess this is probably like my fifth time coming to these monuments. Okay. Do you, are you like in touch with like? Do you care about like the government and history and all that shit? No, I don't care about the government, but okay. history and all that. You okay. Know. What do you, What do you care about? Just in life. I like. Mm. I care about my life. <laughs> really. Yeah. What's uh, What's going on in your life these days? School. School. Yeah. Okay. What well, have you been learning about? Anything interesting? Not lately. Yeah. What What's if you were in charge of the curriculum? What subjects? Would you want to be taught in school? Math. Math. Math? Yeah. Yeah? Do you, do you really like math? Yeah. Math, cool. Okay. What's your favorite, like, type of math? Addition, subtraction, the trigonometry? I uh, see. Addition. I mean, multiplication. Multiplication, addition, basin. If, if I put in front of you the multiplication tables, would you be, do you think you would be able to solve them? Of course. Of course. Yes. I ain't, we've been working on this since. Can I got it? It's nothing. That's more than I could do. So, are right, you guys seem like you like 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 school? Are you, are you guys are what? You guys are in high school? Yeah. When I was in high school, I fucking hated school. <laughs> we don't like school, but yeah, we gotta I mean, graduate. I still hate school, but this, we gotta get it done with. We gotta, yeah, we gotta get it over with to do something. Are you are you guys planning on going to college? Nah, well, I ain't gonna lie. I don't know. I it's, might. it's really for college. So you, so you, you like high school, but you don't, you don't want to go to college. Not really. What do you? What, can I ask what you want to do instead? Uh, get a job, live life. You can get a job in college. I like that. What is he talking I like about? that. Get a job, live life. What, like, when when we're thinking about living life to the fullest, what what kinds of things are we doing when we're living life? Partying with the gas, going places. Sure. <laughs> what kind of places you want to go? Be just somewhere beautiful. Somewhere people. I need to like go to you. Dubai with all the rich people. Dubai. He said Dubai. He said what? You have to go to Dubai. I have heard. I have heard mixed things about Dubai. I've heard that Dubai is like a fantasy rich place, but like when you actually get there, I've heard it's. I've heard it's. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard it's kind of boring Dubai and shitty. Ain't really a lot of things to do out there, but the view. How do you two know each other? Since kids. We grew up together, like in the same neighborhood type stuff. Would you would you say that you guys have a, a good relationship with each other? Yeah. Sure. Do you guys you guys ever fight about anything? Sometimes, Probably but stuff, we'll, but we'll, we'll make it up. That's my yeah. that's basically my bro. I like that. I like that. Well, well, when you have gotten into fights, what kind of things have you gotten into fights about? Probably some <laughs> dumb stuff. A game. Like, Probably what time? <laughs> a what? A game. A game. Like, a game. Playing a game. on the PlayStation, like 
on 2K and Madden type stuff. Okay. Now, this might be a controversial question. When you guys play on 2K, who usually wins? Me. No. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here. You know it's me, bro. All right. It looks like, um, looks like you guys are being called to get out of here. Yeah. yeah we'll I don't want to keep you guys later, hanging. Right, hey, thank you guys very much for talking to Gecko. What's your names again? I'm Daquan. Daquan? Darius. Dar Daquan and Darius. Thank you guys for talking to Gecko, right, man. I appreciate you. Hey, thanks, man. I'm Darius. I suck at 2K. I don't like the. I don't play any of the sports games. I feel like sports video games. I mean, look, no offense to people who like them, but I feel like sports video games. Why? If I'm gonna play a video game, I want to do something that I can't do in real life. I want to go around shooting aliens or be like a, a, a fucking cowboy or something. I don't want to. I can play basketball. Well, I can't because I'm not athletic, but. Theoretically, you could play baseball, basketball in real life. So I don't really get the hype. What's your name, man? Josh. Josh. Very nice to meet you, brother. Fuck him. Oh, here we can we can just do a fist bump. Nah, nah, nah. Perfect. Covid ain't here no more. So, Josh. Yes. Well, uh, what's your life like, man? What are you all about? I'm a free spirit. Oh like shit! That. I'm a free spirit. Mm -hmm. And. Came here with some lovely ladies of mine. Hell yeah. We work for Amazon. Oh, cool. And they technically are paying for this trip right now. Oh, really? Why is Amazon paying for this trip? They sent us to Virginia on an away team to go help launch a brand new building. Oh. And we have days off of work, so we decided to come down to Virginia. Oh, cool. What, what, are, what are your guys' plans for the day? To go see the rest of the monument and mm -hmm. go to the White House and grab some food. What exactly is it that you do at Amazon? Uh, I run shipping. Okay. Is that it? That sounds like a really difficult job. No. It's not? No. Really? Because, I mean, okay, so you guys work at Amazon. You know about the public perception of, like, people yep. have to, like, pee in bottles and, like... No. You know, all that stuff. I don't know anybody peeing in bottles. She is, has her mouth gaped open right now. Because she can't. Uh, uh, so is that not true? Because that's what everyone thinks is going know. on. I, I don't know about peeing in bottles. If you're peeing in bottles in Amazon, then you got a hygiene problem, mm -hmm. and that hygiene problem needs to stay outside of the building because nobody wants to have that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. So uh, what is it really like? Oh hi. <laughs> I love Amazon. People ask me all the time, "Do I get paid to say I love Amazon?" No. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for Amazon, I wouldn't have met these lovely ladies and everybody else on the away team. I wouldn't be able to experience Washington, D.C. and done all the stuff that we've done so far down in Virginia. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the best part of the job? Meeting new people. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what did you do before you worked at Amazon? Oh, God. I worked for a dispensary. You worked for a dispensary? I made edibles. Okay, nice, man. For John Legend. Was, um, did you meet, like, uh, it seems like at this new job, you really like your coworkers, you met a lot of yeah. people. Was it like that at the dispensary? Did you have good coworkers there? Yeah, we had, like, maybe 10 people, 11 people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was you great. Ever, you ever miss the dispensary days? Yes. Yeah. But I went and traded Amazon for the world. Mm, okay. I guess I feel like at Amazon, you're not... Like at the dispensary, you can probably get stoned all day at work. At the we Amazon, did. you probably can't. Yeah, every day we did. Every okay. day okay. we had to. You had to. Because I made. Because we made the gummies, we had to test them we out. Had to test them out. Okay, sure. I was high every day. That's what sure, I got. Sure, sure, sure. I feel like being really stoned and trying to navigate the shipping at Amazon would be uh, very difficult. Yeah. What would you say is the hardest part of the gig? Being at Amazon. Yeah. People not knowing what they're supposed to do. Mm. Lazy people, incompetent. Mm. People that doesn't have um, self-control. Mm -hmm. Lack of common sense is the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Are you in a like leadership position? Like you're telling other people what to do? You have people yes. under you? And how, how has that been? Like navigating, kind of managing people and whatnot. That's great. Yeah? I love it. Do you, does anyone ever like get pissed off at you or like All you know fuck my but boss that, but that's not a, that everything i'm saying is not just an amazon thing it's an all business thing all over the world yeah of course so you you can deal with and that's a skill to have to like just be okay with people being pissed off at you did you say that's a skill you have yeah i like that 
I like that. What do you What do you see for yourself in the future? Are you sticking at Amazon for yes. the rest of your life? Most likely. Really? Yeah. When you were a little boy, what did you want to do? Hell, I, I don't even remember what I did last week. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man! That's so cool. I'm, uh, I mean, I'm glad to hear that the uh, it worked out for someone. You know, I don't know what happened to the guy who was pissing in bottles. I've never heard somebody pissing in a bottle at Amazon. Okay. Well, listen, man. What's your name again? Josh. Josh. Is Josh? Is there anything else you want to say to the people of the computer before we go? Hi, I'm Josh, and you want to say hi? Either you guys want to talk? No. They seem like they don't want to talk. Yeah, I guess not. What are, yeah. you, what are you guys going to do after this? Are you going to go see the, the the monuments? Yeah. Nice, man. And chill. Nice. Yeah. Man, this has been the best Amazon ad of all time. I, ca- I kind of want to work there now. You should. Can I can I wear the suit? Or is that like a danger at the factories and stuff? She said I can wear it for Halloween? Yeah, for Halloween you Do you can. guys like have Halloween parties and dress up and shit? Uh, people do dress up, but they don't have like Halloween parties. People do come in in like costume and stuff. What are you going to be? I, don't know, I wasn't there last year for Halloween. I was out with family. Is it, it was I? I don't know where I was at. Well, Josh, thank you very much for talking to a gecko, man. I appreciate it. You know what? It was nice meeting you. Uh, nice meeting you too, man. Real gecko. Real gecko. You know what? You have made my day. You've made my day, man. This has been. I feel like it's very interesting to hear. Like I've only ever heard negative things about Amazon. It's cool to hear someone who who fucks with it. Yeah. Uh, do your do they fuck with it too? Yes. You can nod yes or no if you fuck with. it. All right, they fuck with it. Yeah, because okay, you know cool. what? I've met some cool people, and we're gonna go and have a we're gonna have an actual vacation sometime later this year, beginning of next, and we've all became really good friends. That's awesome, man. Jeff Bezos is actually a really good guy. I don't know. I, I've never met him. And was, uh, somebody named this guy and it's got to be doing something right. They're hiring some decent people. That's beautiful. Three of us right here. That's beautiful. Hey, thanks for talking to a gecko, Josh. I You're appreciate you. Take care, guys. What's your name, dude? Henry. Henry, very nice to meet you. Likewise. Uh, what is your life like? Um, right now, we're traveling for work. Okay. My life is a uh, dad of four kids. Mm-hmm. So I'm between sporting events, working events, hanging out with my dog and... That's when, you know, going out on dates here and there as a single dad. That's you're pretty much single, it. You're single dad of four kids. Yeah. Jesus. Happens. <laughs> how how often are they with you versus with... 50-50. Uh, 50-50? Yeah. So you get... Is it like 50-50 you get all... Or is it like two and two split? No, it's 50-50. Uh, well, I have one that lives with me 100% of the time, and then the other oh, really? three are 50-50. Man. So one week on, one week off. How the hell do you even... I, I, couldn't, I couldn't fucking take care of a plant. How do you take care of four kids alone? Uh... I don't sleep. You don't sleep? Yeah. Does it get to you? No. No, I mean, look, I uh, unwind, like, with my friends. Like, that's one of my business partners, Dave, there. Yeah. And, um, you know, we make everything fun, life fun, work fun, mm. kids fun, family fun, sporting events fun. Mm. That's all you can do. You d- don't strike me as a guy who has uh, mental breakdowns? Uh, I mean, I think we all get a little breakdown here and there, but, okay. you know, not as soft in this one, we hope. That's it. What is the hardest thing about being a single dad of four kids? Hardest aspect of the whole thing. Sometimes you want a partner to back you up when the kids are going haywire. Yeah, yeah. That's about it. Mm. So can I? So you're going on dates here and there. Yeah. So can I ask? Uh, has it ever been like you know? Is it is it a big thing when you're going out on dates with a new girl and you're like, hey, by the way, I have four kids. Yeah, but I mean, the, normally when I approach it, I'm like, look, yes, I have four kids, but yeah. you're never going to meet them. Really? Yeah. Why, why, why would you never meet them? Yeah, I mean, unless I'm going to be in a serious relationship with someone over a year plus, okay. there's no need for me, my kids to get involved. So what, do you, what, do you, what are you out there looking for? Are you looking for a serious relationship or are you just blowing off some steam? Well, I've been blowing off steam for the past two years. So okay. it's more like, um, you know, just kind of vibing, seeing mm-hmm. what the right move, the right person mm-hmm. comes abo- uh, mm-hmm. on board and see where it goes. That's is it. there is part of you like sick of blowing off steam and you want to settle down into a relationship or are you enjoying... The way you're approaching things now. I think as men's, we're traditionally hunters. So we sort of like the game. Okay. Let's put it that way. Sure. Uh, but I think, you know, there's also a part of me where it's like, I'd rather have something more centralized, something more f- like hone focus where mm-hmm. I'm not like, you know, going here and there. Just yeah. 
I also like structure, which yeah. relationships give you structure with the right person, of course. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of order, a little bit of chaos. I'm, oh, I'm all chaos right now, so yeah. <laughs> Interesting. And uh, can I ask, you know, if it's not a touchy subject, what, how are, how's the relationship with with the ex? Are you guys cool? Yeah, we're cool. You're cool. Yeah. Okay, nice, nice. Does um, uh, how old are the kids? Oof, I've got uh, different ranges. I have a uh, 19, 15, 9, and 7. 19, 15, 9, and 7. Yeah. Man, so I guess is the 19 year old, are they kind of like they're on their way out? The 19, she'll probably be home for another six months or a year, and then she goes off to college. And, and does the 19 year old kind of help take care of the rest? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Not too much. Not I mean, too much. She, she's doing her own thing, and plus, I don't want to put that burden on her. It's not her sure. responsibility. Sure, understandable, understandable. How did you get into the whole talk of Gecko? Oh, uh, a real gecko. I well, I, you know, listen, I do this because, um, well, I'm alive and I'm going to die one day and I need to figure out what I'm going to do between now and then. Okay. And I, 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 I just want, I needed to pick something where I could look at it and go, okay, this is a reasonable use of my time here on this earth. Okay. And I, I feel like being a gecko and talking to strangers about their lives is a reasonable use of time. I mean, listen, the conversation goes into how we connect with people, right? Yeah. And, and really having, like, you know, strong questions, more like inquiries, not necessarily about what they do, what they are, but who they are and getting the essence of them. Yeah. You know, that's, I think that's truly important. Obviously, yeah. you're doing with strangers, but you're getting deep in with them. So there is a little bit of a closeness. And, and of course, you know, the real gecko kind of attracts people, right? But, you know, it's, uh, I don't think too many people have these type of conversations, to be would, honest. Would you say that you are, would you say that you are like, you know, a guy who opens up fairly quickly? I have walls. <laughs> you have walls? Yeah. I mean, okay. I can pivot around my walls. I open up to, like, the, those that are close to me. This Depending is counter- on the trust that we have, you know what I mean? So, I asked someone this earlier, do you, do you trust people easily? <sighs> I would say yes, to a fault. To a fault? Yeah. Interesting. Have you had a lot of times in your life where you trusted people and it, and it just backfired on you? We've all gotten fucked over once. Sure. Or twice. Sure. Sure. The thing is that the ones that don't are the majority. Mm-hmm. So if we look at the minority side, obviously we'll, we'll look at everything in a negative connotation, sure. right? I'd rather live in positivity. I like that. You know, it's hard. It's a hard thing when you're like a trusting person and you trust someone yeah. and they fuck you over to still remain a trusting person. But I feel like it's important, right? Because you don't want to let somebody else jostle who you are. Like that's your decision to be a trusting person. You don't want to let other people fuck with that. Well, right, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, I am who I am and I'm going to be who I'm going to be. So Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's it. And I can't really let the influence or the actions of others interrupt the way that I've built my life or at least built my peace. That's the important part, to be honest. How do you feel like you've built a nice structure of peace at this Uh, point? Over the last few years, yes. Uh, How did you get there? Uh, Meditation. Um really sitting down and having moments of quiet within myself it's really more just like self self-seeking mm-hmm. right looking in the mirror and trying to face who i am mm-hmm. that's about it was there like a is that something you've been doing for a very long time or was there kind of a point in the recent past where you made an active effort to start looking at yourself active effort after divorce or active like after during, after the, during the divorce so interesting interesting yeah. Would you, I mean, look, would you say you're better off after the divorce? Yes. Nice. I'm doing more things that I wanted to be doing for, for a very long time. Nice. Nice. You know, having a little bit more freedom, being my own person, not having to hide who I am nice. in a certain degree. And, you know, that's it's positive. What Can I hear, like, a couple things that you've been able to do that you kind of couldn't do before? Um, get drunk as hell with my friends. <laughs> so, fuck yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> go to happy hours. Go to uh, more, like, a... Uh, social events mm-hmm. uh, where I didn't before. It's not because I couldn't. It was just sort of I was stuck in a box, right? Right. And within that box, I was only able to do X, Y, Z. Again, not that anyone was putting uh, fences around me. It was just more like self-imposed because I thought that's what I was supposed to do. But then once I broke from that mentality, you know, I moved on. I mean, shit, I feel like, to, I, I, you know, I don't have kids, but I feel like once you have them, it, so, it sounds like it would be like impossible to live your life, no. but you seem like you're you have fucking four of them, and you seem very put together as a person. Just like have, your energy. I have four dogs, a dog, and a hamster. So I'm, I'm living life, baby. Where do you, where do you buy all this food? Where do you keep all the food? Four dogs, four kids, five hamsters, seventeen birds. Where where what are you feeding all these motherfuckers? I'm a professional uh, supermarket burglar. So you know, you're professional supermarket what? Burglar. Really? Yeah. 
What, what, what's, what's your biggest score from the supermarket? Oof. It was like two subs at Publix. How, <laughs> how, were, they, were they foot longs? I just fuck with you. <laughs> no. Six inch. Okay. It's the only thing I could that fit. That counts as kind of just one foot oh, long. Oh, yeah. So, you know, it's like semantics. Nice to meet you, man. Yeah, nice to meet you too, Henry. Fucking sublime, baby. Oh, yeah, for sure. What's going on? Um, well, so I walked past, and then I thought to myself, I think I need to talk to a gecko. Uh, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Is there anything in particular that you want to talk about? If not, we can, we'll find it. But I want to give you the opportunity in case no. you do. No. I just felt like I can relate to someone who mm. comes out here dressed like a gecko and wants to interview people. Interesting. Tell me, tell me what it is about this that you feel like you can relate to. Um, well, everything. Mm -hmm. Um, I love the fact that your face is painted green. Thank that you was very the much. first thing that really told me that I needed to come over here because it's like you're really committing to it. Thank you. Um, I don't really relate or conform to anything like gender conformative. Sure. So, um, when I see someone dressed like a gecko, I'm like, well, that's perfect because that's nothing. You know, that's a fucking gecko. Right. Geckos are like, you know, if are you, it's like, are you a man or are you a woman? No, I'm a gecko. It's beyond human. It's beyond human. Exactly. And that's what I love. Exactly. What is your name? Uh, it's Ryan. 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 Very nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, Mr. Did you, gecko. Did you draw those things on your knees? Um, so, oh my God. Those are tattoos, but, um. Those are tattoos. Yeah. Um, I got them in my bedroom one night. It was totally random. Um, did you administer them yourself, or did uh, no, someone else administer them? No, for you? someone else totally random did them. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I have twenty. Wait, somebody tattoos. totally random well, did them in your bedroom. Well, he wasn't totally random, but like he was basically totally random. How, how did you meet this person? Well, I knew him for a while. Um, I don't really want to talk about that. You don't have to talk about anything you no, want to talk about. No, I don't really want to talk about the dude who tattooed my knees. But um, he has a tattoo of something that I drew on his stomach on his stomach and then now I don't talk to him anymore mm -hmm. so I mean mm -hmm. I guess that's a W for me mm -hmm. how um, what do you what is your life all about um, what, what do you what do you do for for work or you oh go to school or? okay so I work at Cedar Point actually Cedar Point hold on Cedar Point that's an amusement park right yeah oh fuck that's sick um yeah okay so I I moved from West Virginia yeah. to Sandusky Ohio because Cedar Point has housing for um, their associates Mm -hmm. So I live in a dorm at Cedar Point and work really? at an amusement park. Yeah, so um, that sounds fun. It is really fun. I work in merchandise, um, which, in my opinion, is the best department because a bunch of air conditioning. Oh yeah, everything's air conditioned. The um, best. My like primary location or whatever mm -hmm. is Millennium Force Photos, which is for. Um, the Millennium Force roller coaster. It's the pictures mm. that are taken on the ride. I sell them. Uh, um, I have to like block inappropriate ones and all kinds of stuff. It's actually a very like fast paced job. So I've let me ask, what are some of the more inappropriate things you have seen while uh, having that you have had to block? Um, well, okay. So let me tell you, this isn't about Millennium Force. Magnum XL 200. That is our. Um, can't remember the name for I feel the like that place right invites, now. Invites, uh, yeah, okay. you know, blockable photos. So Magnum XL. That it was. Uh, it's like from the eighties. Um, sure. It, I think it's called a terror coaster. It's two hundred feet tall. Okay. Um, something like that. Mm -hmm. That might be totally wrong, but um, it's very rough now, and it's notorious for um bringing out boobs. Um, so basically, every time you work at um that location you have to block at least 10 like full like nipple out like photos of like, really yeah so these aren't people who are like intentionally flashing their boobs no okay so Just that the, happens the, the, that the does centripetal happen. force of the ride yeah at that ride specifically um that happens yeah but it does happen intentionally on every ride, but it's usually dudes. And a lot of the time they get mad at me because I'm like, bro, it's inappropriate and unsafe to take your shirt off on a coaster. I don't care if you're a dude. Sure. The other day, some dude was like, if I was at the beach, it would be appropriate. And I was like, well, you're not you're at not the beach. At the you're beach. on you're a at Cedar coaster. Point, and this is my okay, fucking so domain. The thing about Cedar Point is it's yeah. on Lake Erie. So it does kind of technically have a, like a beach. Okay. But he wasn't at the fucking beach. No, he was at Cedar Point. Yeah. Not to talk shit. If you see this job management i'm sorry if you see this guest i'm sorry but 
What is the top selling? Uh, uh, do you work in like uh, just the photos or do you no, do that I at work, the gift shop? Um, gift shops. What's There's, the top selling item at the gift shop? I'm the top curious. selling item at the gift shop. It depends, really. I feel like Cedar Point, like Disneyland, motherfuckers going there to buy some merch. Well, but Cedar Point doesn't seem like. Okay, so Cedar Point is actually a very, like, very world renowned park. Um, we have, okay, so, uh, Top Throw Dragster RIP, um, is 420 feet tall. It is, there's only two coasters in the world that are that tall. Really? It's closed right now. I probably shouldn't really get into that, but it is getting, it's, um, like, what was the word they used? Retired. Yeah. And, um, it's going to be like rebranded or whatever next year, probably. And I never got to ride it, but the ride experience is 17 seconds long. It shoots you 420 feet in the air and then ah. just drops you right down. And then there's Millennium Force, which there's only six coasters in the world. And don't quote me on that because are, I'm not for sure. How are you sure. with rides? Like, do oh, you, fu- do you fuck with like the... Yeah. Like, would you go... I, you know, I've, I, I've been watching uh, videos on YouTube of like really fucked up coasters. Like, yeah. Have you seen King Ka? Yeah. So King Ka is the only other coaster in the world that's as tall as Top Thrill. Top thrill, uh, top thrill is uh, the one at Cedar Point, right? Yeah. Have you been on it? No, because it's close. Oh shit! Did it, you just tell me that? Yeah, I did. Oh man. Short term memory of a gecko. I do have short. I, I I've been like uh, uh, thinking about going to see a doctor. I think I genuinely might have some kind of weird short term. Would you go thing. to a doctor or a vet? I feel like I'd go to the doctor, and then the doctor, <laughs> I'd have him look at my stuff, and if he's like, I don't know what's going on over here, then I'd go to the vet. Okay. Isn't it weird that a vet? Is like I like you. All right, you have to go to medical school. All right, I'm gonna try to explain this point. You have to go to medical school to become an expert on the anatomy and what's going on with a human. But you go to a vet, and a vet is like, ah, we we like six different types of bodies. We know them. Like we can do lizards, we can do gerbils, we can do cats. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you have to go to a different medical school for each thing? Do you know what I'm talking about right now? Do you know what I'm yeah. trying to say? Yeah. It makes sense, right? Yeah, I think you probably do have to do that. What's your name again? Ryan. Ryan, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, I don't know. Um, I really don't know. Get a job at Cedar Point, I guess. It's fun. Hit up Ryan if you want to get a job at Cedar Point. I'll hook you up. It's really easy. I got hired in like 15 minutes in art class. Ryan, thank you very much for talking to the gecko. <laughs> Appreciate you very much. <laughs> go uh, Sublime, baby. Yes. Go Cedar Point. Go, go, Gek. All right. This has been uh, Being a Gecko in D.C. That was a crazy episode. What do we have here? We had the Amazon guy. We had the uh, uh, tank guy. We had the uh, uh, guy with the Mountain Dew. We had the robot. Switzerland person. That was a crazy episode. It's funny, and I say this every episode, but all of these uh, things start with me rolling up to a place being like, what the fuck am I doing? Why? Nobody's going to come up and want to talk to me. We're not going to get anything good. It starts from a really just like, I don't know what's going to happen place. And it always ends with me being like, man, I'm glad we did that. That was awesome. We got some really good stuff. So, uh, look, if you're ever entering a situation and you're unsure about it, see it through to the end. Something cool might happen. I'm a gecko uh, outside of the Washington Monument. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, uh, do all that stuff. Eat a handful of Cheez-Its. I'm saying words, and I'm not going to say them anymore. Uh, Thanks for watching. Get blessed, you.